welcome to Let's Go Chase That Train. Roll that beautiful train footage. Hello there, you have reached the deep south here in Mississippi where trains is what it's all about. Now, I'm standing in front of a dog that is our, our, um, tr our story of a true railroad dog who lived in the 1920s. Now, I must tell you quickly that um, this is not really his picture because I could not find one of Shadow when I began researching this story. So I went online and I found this picture under public domain and I thought this, this is what Shadow would have looked. Look into his eyes, how, um, how committed and, and genuine he seems to be. And he certainly was. It all started in the 1920s when the crew came to work one morning. And uh, as usual, they hung up their coats and put their lunch pails in the corner of a railroad car, and they began to hear a whine. And uh, upon searching, they found this little tiny dog, I mean, just barely born, and he was starving and he was thirsty. And so it was at that time that the crew, the men who made up the crew, uh, committed to take one spoon of their food every day out of their lunch pail. And that was about 15 spoons daily. And that was his food. And he grew to be a fine, fine dog. And uh, he was really a member of the crew. When the men came to work in the morning, he walked with the inspector to check out the lines to make sure everything was ready for the incoming trains. Now, if he found a problem, he would sit, he would bark two times and sit down. And that is where the problem was on the line. Uh, he was so dependable. When he heard a, with his astute hearing coming in miles away, he would howl and then the crew knew to get ready for an incoming train. And thereabouts, if he also heard or sniffed a, some type of trouble, let's say another dog or some kind of problem, he growled and snarled and alerted everyone that there was something in the premises that should be checked out. And so the men loved him and they named him Shadow. Well, one day he's laying on the tracks taking a nap and a train came along and cut off the end of his tail. They scooped him up, took him to the vet. Now I want to mind you, this is in the terrible days of the Great Depression. Money was scarce, but these, these men who were so fortunate to have a job even, but they pooled their money to take him to the vet to have his tail sewn up. I mentioned it in a newspaper column I wrote about it. Uh, I believe it was around $24. Uh, which was a huge amount of money, but they got their money together and they paid the bill and then they they nailed that bill from the vet on the wall there so everyone would know how important he was. That would be something over $500 in, at least, in, at least. in 2024 dollars. That's true and this is in not, let's say 1924. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he was important. He mm -hmm. was important. He was respected as a canine and he was loved, much loved. And he, he was the, the railroad dog for the Meridian Depot. Well, of course, as he aged, he lived uh, around 12 years old. He began to lose his hearing and his sight. And one morning the crew arrived to work and he had been killed by a train out on the track. But you know, they threw him a big funeral. People came from far and wide. They brought food and everyone celebrated the life of Shadow, the Meridian Mississippi Railroad Dog. 